I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And we specialize in those custom strategies so that it's really designed to support your goals, your needs, and what you have to work with and give you a plan that you can work toward. And today we're going to talk about headline news. There's so much that's going on. Um, and we're going to do a little hybrid thing. So I'm going to go back and forth between the paper and uh, on also from questions that have come in. The first one, and if you've been watching me for a while, you know how I feel about Amazon. Merchants lobby against Amazon. Washington. Merchant groups have formed a national coalition to campaign for stricter antitrust laws, including measures they hope could force Amazon.com to spin off some of its business lines. The effort was launched Tuesday by trade groups that represent small hardware stores, office suppliers, booksellers, grocers, and others, along with business groups from 12 cities, organizers say. Merchants plan to push their congressional representatives for stricter antitrust laws and tougher enforcement of existing ones. So why are they upset? All right, I'm going to back up here for a second to move forward. Because when Amazon came into being, they did not have to pay sales tax. And because Washington was funding that, or Washington, I'm sorry, Wall Street was funding them, they didn't have to make money. So they went into these different cities and they decimated mom and pop shops who, number one, had to charge taxes and number two, have to have a profit in order to stay in business. And when a massive amount of decimation was done, well, now guess what? Amazon collects sales tax, don't they? But they also look at the most popular products and create their own products to compete with, their, with the merchants that really, frankly, have been forced to do business with Amazon because there's really not much choice. Yeah, Amazon, not my very favorite company because I think it undermines what America is really all about. Whew. Okay, here's another one that I just love. China, subduing Hong Kong tries not to scare off the rich. There are definite advantages if you can align yourself with those that are, that are highly wealthy because they can influence laws, etc. Political opposition has been quashed. Free speech has been stifled. The independent court system may be next. This is in Hong Kong. But while Hong Kong's top leaders take a tougher line on the city of more than 7 million people, they're courting a crucial constituency, the rich. Top officials are preparing a new tax break and other sweeteners to portray Hong Kong as the premier place in Asia to make money, despite the Chinese Communist Party's increasingly autocratic rule. So far, the pitch is working. But that also goes back to if you can do the same thing that the guys at the top are doing for themselves, then the most likely outcome is that you're going to be better off than if you do what the masses are doing. Just this headline, and then I'm going into the details on the next one. White hot. U.S. stock rally masks massive value swings. We're seeing constantly again the markets, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, the Dow, tracking to new all-time highs. While Oh, and I forgot to do that. I'll go back to that one. But while they're tracking new time highs or all-time highs, the it's being sold because we've got this great global economic rebound which of course is done on a mountain of debt. And it also means that those corporations that have the riskiest balance sheets, that have the most leverage in the system, are actually outperforming some of the more conservative stocks. But there are cracks that are appearing, regardless of what Fed Chair Powell says or 
anything. And here's a big one, and I want you to be aware of it. Retail investors pull back trading activity. Retreat marks sharp reversal from frenetic pace that occurred at the beginning of the year. This is a crack that we have to pay attention to because they need those retail investors to keep the stock markets flying high. Uh, I didn't pull this, but the NFT market that I did do something about a while ago, remember there was that one uh, NFT that sold for 6.9 or 62.9 million. And even the artist said, holy, mm, right? Well, that market has now cooled off considerably down about 70% and also a lot fewer transactions. So is this really kind of telling everybody that the music is going to stop? I don't know yet because there's an awful lot of liquidity. And as you've seen in some recent videos, more liquidity coming into these markets, whether it's from, you know, the current stimulus checks that are going out or the new stimulus program that's coming into play with infrastructure and then additional pieces of stimulus coming in. That's what's driving these markets. And every time they create new money, the value of the money that's out there goes down. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. So much as, as Fed Chair Powell wants to tell you, yeah, the inflation, we're going to allow it to run and run and run because we got to get that average 2% target. But eh, it's not going to last. No, none of this money printing we've done. It's not really going to do anything. It's not going to hurt it. Oh my God, I don't think that's what he really thinks because I think he's a smart man. And those statements sound awfully stupid to me. But his job is to make sure, big part of his job, is to make sure that the public is nudged and guided in the right way so that they respond accordingly. Thank you, perspective management or perception management for making sure that things happen the way they want them to happen. There was a lot on this one because they also talk about the virus strains testing the global rebound. And all we're hearing is how the whole world is opening up. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But big firms crowd into market for houses, driving up prices. A bidding war broke out this winter at a new subdivision north of Houston, but the prize this time was the entire subdivision, not just a single suburban house, illustrating the rise of big investors as a potent new force in the U.S. housing market. Oh, goody. <laughs> oh, goody. What do you think? Yeah, this can go on forever. Why not? Why not? I mean, some insanity lasts a really, really, really long time. And again, personal guarantee. This one scares me. This one scares me. Personal guarantees on debt weigh on small businesses. Pledges by owners to cover obligations loom large after pandemic shutdown. What we're going to see is a continuation of the consolidation where, you know, it's just your perception that you have choice, but in reality, the larger firms just gobble up everybody that's smaller and therefore take their market share along the way. And they may package things differently so that you walk into a grocery store and you think, wow, I have thousands and thousands of choices. When in reality, it's just six firms that own all of that. You really don't have many choices. And I think a lot, that's what we're fighting for here. That, that's really what gold and silver does for you. It gives you choice. I'm all about choice. I may not have any choice if we go into a digital currency. I mean, if that's our tool of barter, of course, I'm going to have to have it. But my choice is not to convert or be completely at their mercy. So that if I have the physical gold and silver outside of the system, I can convert it into that new currency as I need it. And therefore, it will prevent those negative inf in interest rates from having a major impact on me. 
and the decline in the valuation of the currency. Not going to impact me as much. So this is really about choice and we're losing more and more and more of them as we move forward into it. And once everything is digitized, what choices do you have? And you really need to ask yourself that question. What choices will I have when everything I have, or if everything I have is controlled by the government or a central bank? Do they care about me? No, they have a job to do. They have to do it. So I'm going to take some uh, questions now. And uh, let's do the Oz from Twitter. Do you think people who own gold in China are considered high risk citizens since they are in a surveillance state and their wealth is out of the system? Actually, citizens in China that own gold, most of them, they have been, when they, when they allow their citizens to own gold again in 2006, they allowed them to buy the gold through the bank and hold it in their accounts at the bank. So that's how most Chinese citizens actually hold their gold. Therefore, I don't think that they would be considered high risk because they're not really out of the system. And China really encouraged gold buying because if they do indeed buy it in the bank and hold from the bank and hold it inside the bank, how easy is that to confiscate? Okay. And uh, Justin B asks, what do you think the purchasing power of gold and silver will be during the great reset? Well, what history tells us, I mean, you know, first of all, you have to understand that, that a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So the gold price has to, central bankers have to suppress the gold price. When they do the official reset fiat against gold, what you're really seeing is gold and silver rise somewhere near their true fundamental value. So when you're talking about purchasing power, even in the suppressed range that it's been, it still holds your purchasing power even, which also means that when it expresses to its true fundamental value, it will buy you a whole lot more. So, you know, some people say, well, is gold an investment? Well, any asset that is in a long-term positive trend that is severely undervalued and a bargain has a lot of potential for growth. So it's, it, it is an investment in many, many ways because we can define or at least get us somewhere near what that true fundamental value is for that gold. So the purchasing power of gold and silver during the Great Reset is enormous because what else holds that purchasing power? And it flip-flops, right? So right now, like, well, I can't say this about Venezuela because they just did a second reset in the stock market that was up here and the gold that was here. Well, actually it was here because they'd already done this reset. So the stock market, oh, you can't even see it. Okay, was up here, that flip-flopped, right? So now you have gold price up here and all the stocks down here at the bottom, right? Now we have to see who's going to survive that. But would it not make some sense when we see who survives it and we see the big money going in and accumulating to take some of these gains here and convert it into who's most likely to survive? That's, that's a big chunk of the strategy. That's what we're going to be paying attention to. And if you continue to follow me, I'll tell you when I'm doing it. So you do whatever you're comfortable with as well. Uh, let's see. Jewel G asks, will the USA in the soon future have more gold depositories throughout the country? Why or why not? Well, I don't really know, but my guess is they may have more as more and more states adopt gold as legal tender and silver as well. And also as more and more states get more and more uncomfortable with the federal government, which is why Texas put in that huge depository. So we'll see, uh, but my guess is they probably have more and, and that's why, because 
because people are starting and, and government officials in the, at the state level are uh, beginning to get more and more uncomfortable with what's happening at the federal level. So it would make sense for them to put in depositories and position in gold. And I will do uh, one more, and that's Bill P. What do you think it would look like for us if the banks implemented crypto? Well, the banks, you know, the, the old system of them being direct intermedi intermediaries between the central bank policies and the public, right? Uh, that's coming to an end and that's been coming to an end for a while. So what we've actually already been seeing quite significantly are banks buying fintech, financial technology firms, or merging with them or working with them in this way or that way. And I think we'll see a continuation of that because the banks want to survive. And when you talk about them um, implementing or what was, what was that something about the crypto? Can you move to that question again, please? Uh, what do you think it would look like for us if the banks implemented crypto? Well, the Fed now accounts are being established, even though the Federal Reserve is not yet ready. I don't know why they would announce this and implement it, but whatever. Um, the Fed now accounts, well, that's the CBDCs, so the central bank digital currencies. Uh, banks themselves are definitely merging with uh, fintech companies and, and look, they're now, Wall Street's making a lot of money on cryptocurrencies, so I expect that to expand. But what I can tell you, I don't, you know, implemented cryptos, I'm not really quite, quite sure what you mean by that, Bill. But what I can tell you is that once everything is digitized, you will have a lot fewer choices and you will be more guided to do what is in the best interest of the central banks and the governments versus yourself. So... I hope you enjoyed that little hybrid piece where I did the headline news as well as the questions for any kind of behind the scenes look. I know Edgar's doing a fantastic job posting lots of pictures. He sits there, he takes them while I'm doing this as well on Instagram at Lynette Zhang and Twitter at ITM trading underscore Zhang. And also don't forget, we have those podcasts. So you can listen to us anywhere at any time without interruption. We have some special things planned. I think they're gonna get better and better and you're gonna really, really like it. But if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit that bell next to the subscribe button. We'll let you know when we're going on live. And don't forget to leave us a comment because we really appreciate knowing what you think. I mean, that's how we finally got the podcast because everybody kept asking for them. So we do listen to you. We do read the comments and it's really important. But if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you share, share, share. It is critically important that people are aware because here's my favorite question. How many times can you be lied to? when you do not know the truth and we are being constantly lied to know the truth, protect yourself because ignorance does not make anybody immune. It just leaves them vulnerable. So, you know, I believe it is a hundred bazillion percent time to cover your assets here at ITM trading. We do that with the wealth shield, which is based upon my studies of currencies and the patterns since, since, uh, when did I do that? Oh yeah, <laughs> 1987. That's right, became a stockbroker in 1986 and started studying currencies in 1987. And the Wealth Shields Foundation is real money, gold and silver. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.